In this Wrestle Talk news, two top AW stars suffer possible concussions, more details and reaction to Claudio Castagnoli's AW debut, and Tony Khan refuses to comment on MJF's contract situation. Support Wrestle Talk! AEW X NJPW Forbidden Door is now in the past. Yes, it's in the very recent past, but at least we can all look back on it fondly and say to our friends, hey, remember AEW X NJPW Forbidden Door? And they'll say, yes, it was yesterday. Do you think I'm stupid? Ah. Oh. Good times. What isn't such a good time is the state of AW seemingly ever increasing injury list, which already features names such as AW World Champion CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Jungle Boy, Bobby Fish, Buddy Matthews, Kenny Omega, Kyle O'Reilly, Matt Hardy, Scorpio Sky, and many others. Unfortunately for AW, it seems we may have to add two more names to that list after last night, with two top stars also suffering possible concussions. Adam Cole, who was already working injured and hadn't wrestled since May 29th, took part in the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship Fatal 4-Way match, which also featured Hangman Page, Kazuchika Okada, and Jay White. After the match, which was won by Jay White, medical staff could be seen checking on Cole. Now it's been reported by Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer, and the belief is he suffered a concussion concussion at some point during the match. While the injury hasn't been confirmed, there was clear concern for Cole after the bell, and many noticed that the final spot of the match, when White rolled up Cole for the win, didn't seem to go exactly to plan. According to a Fightful Select report from earlier this month, Cole had been banged up for a while and has been battling a series of injuries. We'll have to see whether these injuries and now this possible concussion will see him take some time away from the ring. If possibly losing Adam Cole to a concussion wasn't already bad enough, it appears new interim AEW World Champion John Moxley may have also suffered the same fate. Speaking in a post-show promo in which he welcomed Claudio Castagnoli to the Blackpool Combat Club and made fun of WWE, Moxley apologized for rambling and then claimed he is probably concussed after his match with Hiroshi Tanahashi, which saw Moxley bleed profusely from the head for large portions of the fight. While it could just be John Moxley being John Moxley, AW really cannot afford to lose him for any amount of time, or he might end up having about, I don't know, nine interim champions before the actual champion CM Punk is able to return. Punk is currently dealing with a broken foot, and there has been no news whatsoever as to when he might be able to return. If Moxley is indeed concussed and is therefore unable to compete, AW could be without a top male champion for a few weeks. Fingers crossed neither Cole or Moxley has suffered any lasting harm, and hopefully they're back in the ring as soon as they are fit and healthy enough to do so. With so many of its top stars currently injured, is it time for AW to reconsider its more hardcore wrestling style? I mean, is it really worth being a more dangerous and physical company if the consequences are losing so many top stars? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want a full review of last night's show, you can check out Ollie's review from earlier today after you've watched this video. And the link to that is also in the description. On a more positive note, former WWE star Cesaro, now once again wrestling under his real name Claudio Castagnoli, made his debut at Forbidden Door in a match against Zack Sabre Jr. Castagnoli was heavily rumoured to be the mystery opponent for ZSJ, who was originally set to face Brian Danielson, before Danielson also suffered an unknown injury, forcing him to miss the show. On last week's Dynamite, Danielson promised the crowd his replacement would be able to deliver both the technical wrestling prowess to compete at Forbidden Door and the violence to compete in Blood and Guts fair to say he delivered on his promise, I think. Claudio is now officially an AW star and is part of the Blackpool Combat Club. For those wondering whether this would be a one-off appearance for Claudio, Fightful Select has your answer, with a new report stating his deal is long-term, although noted they weren't sure whether anything had actually been signed as of this video going out. The report noted Castagnoli has been training hard at flatbacks in Orlando ahead of his return to the ring, which was his first match since facing Happy Corbin on SmackDown on February 11. Oh no, we'll never get to see Cesaro versus Happy Corbin again. Please, give me a second to compose myself after this devastating realization. According to Fightful, AEW had already prepared merchandise and promotional materials for Claudio Castagnoli ahead of his debut. The report finished by saying that given Brian Danielson's injury, this was not at all the plan for Castagnoli's debut, although they aren't yet aware of what the original plan actually was. What we do know for sure is that a number of his former colleagues are very excited to see him in AEW. From everything that I have heard and 
I can tell you I have heard a pretty average amount of stuff. Cesaro was one of the most popular people in the WWE locker room. His departure from the company was met with a lot of sadness behind the scenes, so it's really nice to see some of his colleagues reacting so positively to his new job. Both former WWE Women's Champion Becky Lynch and former King of the Ring Xavier Woods have taken to Twitter to show just how excited they are. Ever the poet Becky Lynch tweeted, Yes! Woods, on the other hand, took a bit more time to compose himself to think about what he wanted to write, and then he tweeted, Let's go! Well, I for one am looking forward to the Claudio debuted for AW chapter in Woods's eventual autobiography. I, on the other hand, would like to give my own far more mature reaction to this matter. Yes. And it isn't just his former colleagues who are happy, because Claudio appears to be pretty thrilled about the whole situation too. During the post-Forbidden Door media scrum, Castagnoli spoke about how excited he is to be in AEW, and said he already feels like he's been there for years. He said, What is most important is who the fans are excited to see. Who is my dream opponent? I don't care. Who do you guys want to see me wrestle here in AEW? All that stuff can happen. I can probably give you a short list of who I don't want to step in the ring with, and that's nobody. You know what I mean? So to me, I'm a kid in a candy store. You know when you go shopping and they just go, pick whatever, and you just stand there like, uh, I don't know what to pick. I've just come in here and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very happy and it fits. This is my first night and I told this to a bunch of people, but this is my first night and I feel like I've been here for years. It just fits. It's Awesome. He also made sure to mention one man in particular when discussing dream opponents. The last time I faced Kenny Omega was in Ring of Honor in 2008. I think we've both grown a lot since then. I think that's just worth a mention. You know what I mean? Yeah, we know what you mean, Claudio. Someone who didn't appear on last night's AEW X NJPW Forbidden Door show was MJF, who has spent much of the last couple of months being the most MJF he's ever been. While many now feel his TV persona is now a work, there is little doubting he was unhappy with his contract situation in AEW, and that him joining WWE down the line was, and maybe still is, a real possibility. Despite not being on the show, MJF still managed to make some headlines, albeit minor ones, as Tony Khan was asked by the media what the latest on the situation was. For anyone hoping for more interesting insight from Tony, I'm afraid he don't talk about Maxwell. No, no, no. That was a joke written for me by Pete Quinnell. You can probably tell because it was shit. All he said was, especially after the great show we did, I'm not going to comment on it, but it's a fair question to ask, but I'm not going to cover that one now. Thank you. No. Thank you, Tony. Cody Rhodes is now one of WWE's biggest stars, and so it will come as no surprise to anyone that he is going to be one of the playable characters in the upcoming AW game and won't be playable in WWE 2K22. No, wait, that can't be right. Let let me do that again. Cody Rhodes is now one of WWE's biggest stars, and so it will come as no surprise to anyone that he is going to be one of the playable characters in the upcoming AW game and won't be playable in WWE 2K22. Oh, I guess I was right. AEW Fight Forever, the company's first ever console video game, is set to be released later this year, with Fightful Select reporting a couple of months ago that the plan was for a September 2022 release. Kenny Omega, who has played a very big role in the game's development, spoke to Sports Illustrated ahead of Forbidden Door and was asked about Cody's inclusion in the game. He revealed Cody would be in the game, as Omega and the game's creators wanted to make sure Cody's legacy in the company's history is preserved. He said, This may come as a surprise to people, but Cody is still in the game. I was very passionate about making sure his legacy and position within the company were preserved. We've built this game from the ground up, starting everything from scratch. That's why I thought this game could coincide with the birth of this company. You get to experience AW from the beginning, from day one. The game is going to reflect a lot of that, even though our locker room is ever-changing. AW has been slowly announcing playable characters for the upcoming game, with the full confirmed list now being Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, Hikaru Shida, 
Vader, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, Owen Hart, Sting, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, Ruby Soho, Chris Statlander, Nyla Rose, and now Cody Rhodes. No doubt more names will be announced in the coming weeks. If you like video games and especially watching two bald men play them not very well, make sure you check out Pete and Luke's WWE 2K22 MyGM series over on Parts Fun Known. It's really good. Cesaro makes his AEW debut, a wild and angry Shibata appears, and the hottest streak in professional wrestling unfortunately continues. Injuries, injuries everywhere. The Forbidden Door's curse is that it's actually loaded with splinters. I'm Ollie Davis, and this is my review of AEW Times New Japan equals Forbidden Door in about 10 minutes.